In today's video, I'm gonna be covering the seven common mistakes that I see CNC beginners make when they first get into CNC machining. I made this video about three years ago when I was much younger, had a lot less facial hair, and I had a haircut like Lloyd off of Dumb and Dumber. <laughs> Now I have a new camera, which is gonna make me look a lot better. Not gonna help the hair out any, but that's okay. And for the first time ever, we're gonna be doing a giveaway. So stick around towards the end of the video, possibly the middle, to see how you can score on some black walnut. Now, without further ado, let's get into tip number seven. Mistake number seven that I see CNC beginners make is not knowing how to charge for whatever product they're making. Notice I didn't say not knowing what to charge, it's not knowing how to charge for whatever product you're making. So most people when they get into this, they just look around and they see what other people are charging and they charge the same amount for that product, right? But what the catch is, you don't know if that guy's retired, sitting in his garage, don't care if he's making money, you don't know if he got the wood for free, you don't know any of those things, right? And so if you're paying for a lot of this stuff versus somebody else is not, you know, you're gonna be undercharging and therefore you're gonna be losing money. Knowing how to charge, is really important because what it does is give you a bottom line. Now you can always go above what this formula I'm about to give you. You can always charge more, but you always wanna have a bottom of, you know what, this is my baseline, this is my break even, I can't go below this. Now, how to charge, very basic. You have your time, you have material cost, and you have CNC time, right? Your time is whatever you need to be charging. If you're 18 years old or you're 16 years old and you only wanna make $10 an hour, great, charge $10 an hour. If you wanna make $100 an hour, whew, you better be making something really nice because it's really hard to charge $100 an hour for your total labor cost. Now, material cost. Material cost, you mark it up 30%. So if you buy something for $10, you mark it up 30%, you're gonna charge $13 for that material cost. That helps because it covers up all your errors, covers up different things, right? If you have a, um, a bit that breaks or the piece of wood messes up, right? That extra 30% just gives you a little bit of cushion. Now, the last thing is machine cost. How much do you charge for your CNC? Well, that depends. How big is your CNC, right? I have this one right here. This was about $6,000. Now it's almost 10 years old. I charge anywhere from 50 cents a minute to a dollar a minute on this CNC, depending on what I'm doing. On my other CNCs, I have five of them. On my biggest, which is a dual head $300,000 CNC, I charge $240 an hour for it, which is like $4 a minute, because that thing is really expensive. So depending on the CNC, you're gonna determine how much to charge. I actually did a video on how to calculate product cost, so check that out on the channel um, if you'd like to know that. Now let's go on to mistake number six. So according to the poll on our community post, 48% of you said that this mistake is the easiest for CNC beginners to make, and that mistake is not knowing the capabilities of your CNC machine. So a lot of you, if you are a beginner, are not gonna have anything that's really bigger than this. Well, I hate to tell you that you're not gonna be able to buy these half inch wide diameter bits, right, that are three inches long and just be hogging out material. It doesn't work that way. This tiny machine cannot handle that. It wasn't until I have a $70,000 CNC that it could finally handle half inch bits. Now I have the really expensive one, right? Those can handle half inch bits, but something like this, maybe only a three eighths bit is like the max you can go, you know, a 12 millimeter bit is kind of the max you can go here. Not understanding your machine's capabilities really hurts CNC beginners because they'll put a bit in here and it'll start chattering or this thing will shake or the table shakes and they get bad cut quality and they think they're doing something wrong. Well, really it's just, you just have the wrong bit in there. Your machine can't do that. What these machines are extremely good at and I always tell people is V-bitting, right? You put a 60 degree V-bit or 90 degree V-bit in there, these things are amazing at it because they are just as fast as all my expensive CNCs at engraving names. That's a a huge competitive advantage on all these machines. So I still use my small machines to do engravings and I let my big machines do all the cutting with those bigger bits that are a lot faster in speed. Any kind of eighth inch bits you wanna run on here, right, six mil bits, quarter inch bits, they're gonna be perfectly fine. Just understanding your machine's capabilities will help you as a CNC beginner understand what you're doing right and what you're doing wrong. So the next mistake that I see is people make something that's cool instead of something that sells. So if you've got your CNC and you bought it to actually make money, typically what you think is cool is not what's gonna sell. Uh, if you've got your CNC just to have fun, then totally skip this one. You don't have to worry about it because you don't care if you're selling and making money, right? But what I see most people do and what I did personally is when I got my CNC, I thought 3D carvings were the coolest things in sliced bread, right? I went out and bought all these files, The Last Supper, a deer carving, all kind of awesome stuff, mantle scene, and I was carving them up left and right and I went to a couple market days and I didn't sell 
any of them. Why? Because I thought it was cool. Nobody re else really thought it was cool. Then what I did is understood what sells and I just made that. So even now, 12 years into my business and 10 years into CNC machining, I only know how to program what sells. I don't know how to do 3D engravings anymore, 3D carvings, because I'm not in that game. That's not what sells for me. Understanding what sells and what you need to make is really important on CNC beginners. Now, don't get me wrong, playing with this machine and having fun with it is great. It is gonna learn a lot. You need to push the limits, right, on how to program it and how to do all those cool things. But at the end of the day, if you bought it to make money, make sure you're focusing on what sells and not what you think is cool. The next mistake that I commonly see among CNC beginners is thinking they're gonna be an expert too quickly. This is a huge, huge learning curve and I can't overemphasize how much of a learning curve understanding this machine is, right? At first, you have to learn how to program it. You have to learn Aspire or Corel Draw or Rhino or some kind of CAD CAM, right? Then you have to learn what feeds and speeds to run it at, which is incredibly difficult. And then you have to learn what bits to run those feeds and speeds at, right? And then, after all of that, you have to learn that your machine can't run at that feed rate that it's supposed to, understanding your machine's capabilities, and so you have to sacrifice cut quality and bit longevity because you bought a machine that can't handle that size bit, right? There's a lot of different stuff. I mean, I've been doing this for a very long time and I am still learning every single day on how to do this, right? I still make mistakes literally once or twice a week. So we have a very, very dark ocean right here because I hit the black. Ah! Pro tip, buy cheap bits when you're starting out because you're gonna be breaking them. You're gonna break a lot of bits. And then when you finally feel comfortable, then you can buy the more expensive bits and play with them. But don't go out and buy an expensive amount of bit or an expensive white side or something like that because you're gonna break it before you even really start to use it. The next mistake is not using the correct materials. So what do I mean by that? Well, in my hand, I have three different materials, right? I have this Color Core by King's Plastic, HTPE, right? It's a soft plastic. You have piece of hard maple and a piece of Baltic birch plywood, right? All three of these are gonna mill differently and have different tendencies, right? If you wanna do a 3D carving and you buy pine plywood and you think it's gonna work, it's probably not gonna work because you're gonna get chips and voids and all that stuff and so you're wasting your money on buying materials that you shouldn't be using, right? You're gonna try to mill this maple and it's gonna be a lot harder than that pine that you just cut and so you're gonna break a bit or it's gonna scream at you and you're gonna be terrified because you don't know how to mill maple. But maple's really good at doing 3D carvings on because it's so hard and dense and you don't get a lot of fuzzies. This plastic right here is very expensive and so if you don't understand what this material Material is and really how to mill it that you need to use an O flute when you're dealing with plastics or aluminum or anything like that, then buying the wrong material and not understanding what material you're using can result in bit breakage and your machine not doing what you think it should do. Whenever I'm cutting maple, maple tends to chip a lot more than cherry. And so whenever I'm cutting maple, I know that I have to program it a little bit differently because if not, it chips and breaks a lot more and it's really, it's a lot more brittle and walnut's kind of the same way versus milling like a cherry or a mahogany, it cuts just like butter. And like I always say, like butter, baby. So don't, not like that, I actually say it, like butter. like butter. So if you're not from a woodworking background, be sure you study different types of species, different materials and all that stuff because each material and each species does mill differently. Now before we get into our second point, let's talk about the giveaway. So what I'm giving away is about seven to eight board foot of walnut. They're gonna be in two foot sections and we're gonna announce the winner on a short. And so here's how you can enter. One, you have to be in the continental US. We'll handle all the shipping charges, all that good stuff, free wood. So you have to be in the US. Two, you have to be a subscriber and on the notification squad. And three, leave a comment down below with your Instagram handle so we have a way to contact you if you are the winner. So once again, that drawing is gonna be on a short Short, and then we'll eventually post in the community the winner and hopefully he's showing off or she's showing off the wood that she got. I just want to start giving back to y'all because y'all give so much to me in this channel and I absolutely love it. So now let's go on to the second biggest mistake that I see CNC beginners make. The second to last mistake is not using the correct bit on your machine. Now this kind of goes hand in hand with the last mistake of not knowing what material to use and whatnot. But what I mean by different bits is you're gonna have an upcut bit, a downcut bit, a compression, a rougher, a finisher. You're gonna hear lots of different terminology. The main point that you need to understand is the width of your bit, so the diameter of it, does have an impact on how much like tension is gonna have on your material and how much it wants to move, and then the up cut or down cut factor. There's lots of videos on this. I made a video, there's lots of other YouTubers out there that make really good videos on the difference between up cut and down cut. More or less, up cut bit is gonna pull your product up, and a down cut bit or a down shear bit is gonna to wanna to push the material down. The top side will be a clean edge and the bottom side is gonna be rough. 
that's pretty much it. It'll save you 15 minutes, but if you want it in more detail, definitely watch one of those videos. You know, in, in a nutshell, as long as you know the difference between an up cut and a down cut, and that a wider diameter bit is gonna have a lot more torque and wanna move your products a lot more, you're good to go. So let's go to the number one mistake that I see CNC beginners make time and time again, and even professional CNC machinists make that I see in different shops and factories. And that mistake is running your bit too slow. This one is huge, guys. I see this happening all the time. I went to a factory the other day, they had 30 CNC machines. I was talking to the head guy that programs the CNC and he did not know what his chip load and what his feed rate was. And if any of y'all are watching this, have been watching my channel, I'm like a stickler on that kind of stuff. No! And so this guy had no idea. Luckily he was cutting HDPE, this type of plastic right here. So it didn't matter so much, but he literally ran every bit, no matter what type of bit it was, at the same exact feed rate, same exact RPM, and was just running it. When I was a beginner, I made this ex same exact mistake. You think you're being safe and protecting the bit by running it slow. And it's screaming at you, it sounds like a goat. It's like, ah! <laughs> and maybe not like that, but it's this like, constantly screaming at you and you see a whole bunch of powder. That's not what you want. You don't want fine dust. You would think running a bit too slow would protect it, but what's actually happening is that bit is rubbing and causing friction, just like your hands heating up right here. And that bit will heat up to 200, 300 degrees and get dull all of a sudden. It, it messes with the structural integrity of the bit. It's gonna break, it's gonna turn black, all of those things. And so you don't want that. But when I first started off, I thought slower was better and faster was bad. Now, too fast is bad, but it's a whole chip load thing. You gotta learn about chip load and feeds and speeds. And there's tons of videos on that. I think I have a really good one on this channel about it. Don't think your machine can't handle and your bit can't handle higher speeds. I mean, my quarter inch bits, I send upwards of 500 inches a minute cutting through wood. Absolutely crazy. On a machine like this, I can't go 500 inches a minute. I can only go about 90 inches a minute to 120 inches a minute on this machine. My V-bit, great feed rate for it is 90 inches a minute to 60 to 90 inches a minute on that, um, spinning at about 18,000 RPMs. There's little things like that that you'll learn over time, but do not be afraid to ramp up that feed rate and increase that speed because a bit moving this fast is not good no matter what size bit you've got. But that is the number one mistake that I see CNC beginners make. On that note, I'll end it guys. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. We're trying to get to 100,000 subscribers on this channel. I don't think we're gonna meet the goal by December 31st, 2023, but we will meet it in early 2024. And I couldn't be more excited because this is a recap of a video. One of the very first videos that I made on the channel where I looked like a goofball and uh, I'm so much more knowledgeable now so much better off and I'm just, I can't wait for y'all to really enjoy this journey with me, go along it with me and, and really grow your woodworking business and your woodworking journey as well. So thank you guys so much. And remember, if you ain't cutting it close, you ain't cutting it right.